Hi guys, who's ready to do some learning? Today I've got some good stuff for you. So uh, welcome to Coaching Kids Soccer Podcast. My name's Chris King. Uh, I've got plenty of other books and training courses out there. If you want to Google my name, they'll all pop up for you. I've got lots of stuff on Amazon. Now today we are focusing on how to structure your training session. So I've in previous episodes I've spoken about what gear you need, how I actually set up that gear on the on the training field so um, that the session runs smoothly. But today I wanted to focus on um, my go-to structure that I use for every training session that I ever do with kids. All right, and this can go to adults as well, but I'm um, really fo- focusing on three to ten year old um, kids here. So. Um, if you've got a pen and paper, feel free to pause and then write this down or head over to my Facebook pages. Um, it's in all my kids' coaching books, but I've also put it up, recently put it up on my Facebook page. So you'll find it there um, under the heading of how to structure your training session. All right. Now, it's broken down into five parts. Okay. Now, I've spoken about pre-training before. So when the kids are rock up, it might be 15 minutes early. You should already have um, a small area set up where the kids can go and play a game against each other. So they start 1v1, then as more players turn up, you might have a 3v3 game going before training's even started. All right, so that's the pre-game, pre-training small game. Now, the actual training session is broken into five parts. So I'm assuming that we've got an hour for training. So these five parts go for 10 minutes each and then you've got 10 minutes spare which allows you to um, set up any drills, uh, communicate to the kids, um, anything like that, all right? So you've got to spare 10 minutes up your sleeve. Now, what I like to do is focus on one particular skill on each training session and the four main skills, um, fundamental skills that kids should be learning early on are passing, dribbling, shooting, and 1v1 situations, all right? So say, for example, that uh, the kids are learning how to dribble. So you really want to focus on dribbling for this session. Now, what I would do, the first part, so that's part one, 10 minutes. This is what I call an essential skill practice time, all right? So you've got 10 minutes where the kids can just have a ball each. It's usually just... Let them in a let them loose in a circle or a square with a ball each, and then they can really focus on this skill. So if it's um, dribbling, did I say dribbling? Um, right. So you've got them dribbling round, and then you can say, right, left foot only, outside of the foot only. Um, speed up, dribble quicker, dribble slower, and then they can all do this in a friendly environment where there's no competition, they're not trying to score goals, they're not trying to pass the ball, they're not worried about what, how well their other, um, how well Johnny can dribble, how fast he can go. They're all just doing it at, this, at their own pace. So this first 10 minutes is really key because at a young age, you've got players that are um, at different levels. So you want to give them all, <coughs> excuse me, and confidence on the ball. All right, so that's what that first 10 minutes is. If, for example, you were focusing on passing, you might put the players into pairs and have them pass between each other, all right, using um, instep and then using a left foot, right foot, um, move closer together, move further apart, things like that. So they can really just learn it, not in a game situation, all right. So they're just really working on the focus of their skill. All right, so that's part one, 10 minutes. Now, part two is the fun game. Okay, so you want to get in, uh, you want them to use this skill that they're learning in a fun game situation. So if you're focusing on dribbling, once again, we might use the game of gates, which um, was in a previous episode. So just go back and listen to that if you want that fully explained. But that's basically a square and you've got um, pairs of cones set out through the area and players can dribble through these gates and they get a point each time that they dribble through it. And they try and get through um, it as in as many through as many gates as they can in one minute, in two minutes, okay? So that might be your fun game. So it's still pretty simple, but now the kids are um, using it in not a, an enclosed area. I'm not sure what the right, correct terminology is there. Um, but yeah, so they're, they've got players coming at them from different areas. They've got to control the ball on the move. So it's not just a stationary skill. They're really using it um, in an open area. 
So that's part two, fun game. So whatever um, skill you're working on, that should be um, inside that game. All right. Now, part three. So, so far we've had essential skill practice where they're just learning how to dribble, learning how to pass in an enclosed area. And then you play an actual fun game. Okay, so gates is the example that I've used here. Excuse me for a sec. <clears throat> and the next part, part three, is a small-sided game. All right, the kids love to play a game, so let's have a game. Why Why do we have to wait till the end? All right, that's why I say have a game before training if you can. And now um, uh, in part three, we're having a small-sided game. And what you want to do here is encourage the skill that's being used for this training session. Okay, so if that's dribbling, you might... Uh, reward or award an extra point if a child does a good dribble, gets past a player or uh, dribbles using their non-preferred foot, something like that. Really encourage them or you might just give them a high five after they do it. All right. But if you're playing a game, if they do a dribble and then score a goal, you make that worth two points. All right. So now the, uh, the kids are encouraged to use the skill that they're learning in an actual match situation, an actual game situation. All right, so have you got the gist of that? So it's just a regular game, but I would say it's got a slight change. So you're just trying to encourage the actual skill that you're learning for that session. All right, if that was passing, for example, if the skill that you were practicing for this session was passing in the game, you might award them two points if there's three passes, if three different players pass to each other in the lead up to a goal. You can say, right, that's worth two two goals or two points. Well done. You know, give everyone a high five. So really just uh, reinforce, encourage that skill that they're learning. So they're in a game situation, but they're also practicing. Now, part four. So that's, um, we go back to another fun game. Okay, so um, it might be, so if we're working on dribbling, we might play um, surfers and sharks. All right, sharks and surfers. Um, and that was in a previous episode as well, so head back and listen to that. But that's um, we have two players in the middle, like sharks, and then you have all the surfers with balls trying to get from one end to the other, and they've got some safe islands in the middle, so um, they can really practice on their dribbling, change of direction, change of speed, stopping the ball, things like that. So it's um, a fun game situation where... <coughs> Excuse me, subconsciously they're using all the skills that you're trying to teach them. Now, the last part is let them loose into a small-sided game again. So the same as part three, but now it's just open. And um, don't you don't even have to encourage. You can just let them go. If you want to um, say, well done, if they do do dribbling or passing or whatever, some really good bits, so, you know, do encourage that. But it's really just letting them enjoy themselves, letting them use their bodies, work out what skills they've learnt um, in a game situation, having a bit of fun, all right, for the end of the session. So that's how I structure my training session. <coughs> Excuse me, my throat's going here. Um, so just to run back through it, pre-season, uh, pre-training, you have a small-sided game. As the children arrive, just get them into a game. And then the actual training session, so part one is an essential skill practice, so that's 10 minutes um, in an enclosed area where the kids are, you know, passing, dribbling, um, whatever the skill is. Um, if it's shooting, they can practice stationary shooting or they can practice, you know, shooting the ball on the run. And then part two is a fun game that uh, revolves around that actual skill. So I said gates as an example um, for dribbling. And there's plenty, plenty of other games. Um, and then part three is a small-sided game but you're encouraging that skill that they learned in the first two parts. Part four is back into another fun game. It might be a bit more technical, but be a bit more involved than the first fun game. So my example here was surfers and sharks, where they're uh, dribbling and they've got two sharks out there that are trying to win the ball off them and they have to try and shield it, change directions, change speed. And the last part is back into a, just an open, small-sided game. So no um, rules or regulations, just let them play, let them enjoy themselves and just encourage them and let them finish the session um, on a fun note. Okay. 
Excuse me. Okay, thanks for listening. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, my name's Chris King. If you need any other coaching material, head over to Amazon. I've got three books on coaching kids soccer, one, two, and three, plus some other stuff over there, and a course for beginner coaches on udemy.com. All right, hope you're having a great day. Thanks for listening. Um, Keep up the good work on the training field. All right, if you're having fun, the kids will have fun, and... um, Soccer would be knackered without our grassroots coaches, so just keep that in mind. Just do your best, and yeah, all right, well done. Catch you later.